Hello, my name's Dave and I'm Nappy Vapor. No, I'm not really. It's Dave, it's Dave Dawn. How are you, how are you doing? Are you all alright? It's Sunday night, it's the, uh, the 20th of January 2013 and I'm sitting here in place of Dave Kitson tonight with two guests um, that you will be able to see in this shot here if I, if I point at them. There we have Daz, vaping Daz, as ever was. He's there with the red hair. And over on the other MacBook Pro, you'll see that we have Marco van Basten, the two of them. I shall bring them in. I shall bring them in one at a time and say hello to them. Uh, we'll start with you, Marco. Hello, how are you doing? How do? I'm all right. I look, I look well washed out on that picture. I don't know what's going on there. Um, yes, not too bad. Not too bad on this uh, Sunday. Expecting a, a downpour of the uh, white stuff. And I'm not talking about the uh, white stuff either. Um, sometime this evening in the Yorkshire area, but uh, apart have from you, that, it's not too bad. Not have you not bad. had any yet? We had some last week, and it's been there ever since, obviously. Um, I've not been at the house all week anyway, but I've worked at home all week. Um, but I have to say, on Wednesday morning, after I've uh, done the show on Tuesday night, fingers crossed, <laughs> um, I'm heading up to Scotland, so I'm hoping it's going to be uh, okay up there. Going to the land of the Scots, the jokes. Aye. Aye, men and skirts, it's great fun. I'm sure Daz would like that too, wouldn't you, son? <laughs> <laughs> what, the men and skirts? Well, <laughs> uh, you know, just a thought, just a thought. W what a way to introduce. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not so much the uh, angle of the dangle in a kilt. It's more the swing of the thing, you know. It's <laughs> that's what you've got to look at. I think that's definitely the way to the way to view it. Not so much yeah. the angle of the dangle as the swing of the thing. <laughs> so we are. We, which camera that one? We are here tonight to fill in for Dave. Dave's had to go and do other things on a kind of short notice basis, and that's fine. Family first. That's our motto, and it's what it always is. So. The three of us are sitting here um, to uh, probably extract a little bit of the Michael, may have yeah. a, a touch of the urine, one never can tell, and actually what we, what we decided we were going to do was to look at beginners. I, I'd written one word down and, and both the lads said what we're going to be talking about and I said beginners. Um, because I think we're seeing an awful lot of beginners lately. And I'm just wondering, having been reading through the various different forums, what sage words of advice we need to be given. Now, Daz, are you watching chat? Are you doing a sav tonight, are you? I can do, yeah, not a problem. That would be most excellent if you would do that, please. So anything that comes through, it'll be, uh, it'll be brilliant. Um, beginners, beginners, beginners. Let's go back, let's go back, Mark, or to when you were a Rory Crook to a -Sigs. What yeah. I want to know is, how did you get into them? What course? Did who showed you them? Did you find them yourself? How? Do, what's your journey been like? What's my journey been like? You, you've, you're nicking a whole section from vapor scene. What am I going to do? <laughs> hey, um, how, how, how on. I'm, I've got a show to do on Thursday at all, you know. <laughs> oh dear. Um, my journey started uh, on the 18th of February last year. So it's it's a year next month. Um, and I will be doing a little piece for Vapor Scene on this. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, but that'll I, be stylish and nicely shot with voiceovers and artistically done. This is I, rough and ready with a green background and looking very absolutely. pasty. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no wrong with looking pasty. We can all do it. I mean, I've hidden me bump. Can't tell everybody. I've hidden <laughs> the bump. But uh, back you to you. my bump at the minute. Where did um, you start? Right, so what actually happened was. I was going to have an operation on my knee um, in Feb not February, in uh, April. And the hospital said to me, you really got to stop smoking before you have this operation. So I thought, well, if I'm going to stop, I might as well stop. So I went to Tesco's and I bought myself two boxes of patches. I thought, oh, I'll just use patches. Uh, and then I can't remember what I was doing, but I saw, I think it was a, a spam and it was um, one of the e-cig offer things that came through. So I thought, well, I'll have a look at those. So I did a little bit of research, and I started hitting YouTube, hitting Google, uh, and I found Liberty Flights Forum, right. and I found UK Vapors Forum, yes. and I found um, Scott Bonner's site. 
and I started watching videos and more videos and more videos. Um, and then I bought myself a Reva 901 kit. All oh, right. From, from Libby Flight. And it was, a, it was the uh, tank version. So I bought myself that and some stuff to mix. So I thought I was, I was mixed my own. <laughs> so Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Just, 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 just before we go hurtling any further forward, yep. were you, were you, were you ever tempted by uh, a lucky lady? Did it not? You know, were you not no. the kind of thinking that maybe something that looked like a fag might be what you were wanting? No, not really. Um, strangely enough, my wife had come back from a week in Spain, um, and she brought this little cigar-like. It was a zero nick one, just one you get from the supermarkets. Uh, I had a little look at that and I thought, oh, yeah, it looks all right, but it's not going to do much for me because there's no nicotine in it. Um, but no, I, I didn't consider looking at um, the signal lights at all. I just went to something that looked reasonable and I thought, I'll have a little go at mixing myself just for, you know, um, giggles. Um, so I bought myself some nicotine, some VG and a few flavours and started making some up. And then the following week, I bought a lava tube. <laughs> and then I started buying more stuff, basically. So how that was really how I started. How long in when you got the lot? I'll try that one again. How long in were you when you got the lava tube or Lambo as they call these days? Yeah, I've got yeah the original. That's the original lava tube that I got. The black and still works. Yeah, the black and yeah still works. Yeah, I've got the Lambo, the four the four point zero as well. Um, it was literally. Ten days, something like that. Quick thought, as that. Yeah, because I, I wasn't getting it from the river. It wasn't. It was nice. I was getting flavour, but it wasn't giving me, you know, an oomph, a throw tip. Um, and I was on the forums, and it was. I think it was UK Mersey Mum I was chatting to on the forums, you know, uh, in messages. Um, and then I bought myself the lava tube. Uh, with a couple of batteries and charger, and then I tried DCTs and cartos, um, and never really got on with the DCTs. Always got flooding and or not either not enough juice or too much juice. And I've gone back to them as well recently, and I'm still getting the same thing. So I I just don't get on with them at all. Um, but the lava tube was was really good. And then after that, what did I get after that? I got a gripper after that. Got the Lambo, uh, and then I've got Ego batteries and the spinner, as you know, the spinner. Oh yes. Um, and I've killed one, but uh, the second one I bought is still working, which is good. Um, and then two weeks ago I got an MVP, which I've been using, which we talked about um, on Thursday in our little Not the Haze Hour show. Yes, I've I've watched that back. Yeah. Um, and and uh, before 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 we go any further, can I? take this opportunity to, to say thank you to the rest of the team for standing in on Wednesday and Thursday. Those of you that are on Twitter will know that my iPhone and I were inseparable. Um, it was the only connectivity I had onto the interwebs anywhere because my Infinity system had gone the way of all flesh down the plug hole. It had gone to Sher Sher Shergar's place of rest is probably the best way of putting it. Well, it's one of the ways of putting it anyway. Um, and yes, so Wednesday and Thursday, the team stood in, and I've watched what they stood in and did. And Mark, well, you did Wednesday, didn't you? Well, I did Wednesday because you did my Tuesday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I, yeah, because I mean, I had I've had this cold thing since New Year's Eve, and it was particularly bad on Tuesday, and I just simply couldn't stand the lights. Um, because obviously, when we were sat in our studios, we've got our lights going, and it, my head was banging so much. I couldn't, I couldn't stand the lights at all. So you stood in for me on Tuesday, uh, and then your internet went down Wednesday. So I said, oh, well, I might as well do the show from last night tonight, because I felt a bit better. Um, because literally, I'd been in bed all day. Uh, got out of bed, thought, oh, yeah, I don't feel too bad. We'll, we'll do the show tonight. So I did Wednesday, and of course, we all did Thursday. Uh, and then um, we're here tonight. It's just what we do. Indeed. We like doing it. We do, we do, we do. And there's a, there's a question come in uh, from Vapor Man. I will read it verbatim because I can't. It says, what the hell is that on top of the MVP? That's what it is. Ah, okay. Right. This. It's very long. It, yeah, I'll take it off and, and um, show you. 
It is, it's an Ego 5mm, 5mm CC or coil changeable um, and it's, it takes 5 mils of juice and what you get or what I did get was this is now covered in juice so let's get a bit of that oh he's um, moved yeah oh, I'll tell you auto weight balance has kicked in big time oh sorry about that it's all right don't right, worry so. about it it's gone better <laughs> what now. I got is I've got a, a little adapter and that adapter screwed into the top of said 5 mil ego cc and then that allows you to put any 510 drip chip you like so I've got that one Oh, would that fit? Uh, would that fit the Vision Ego as well? Have you tried? Uh, what Vision Ego thermizer? Aye, I have one here. <laughs> it just um, so happens. Yeah, hold on a second. I, I don't think it will. Uh, no, that doesn't look good. It looks as though you're sniffing something. Yeah, it's a brand. This is a brand new one. Um, let me just see. They will fit the later ones. It's not the earlier ones. Um, yes, it does. There you go. Right. Oh. So, and then shove that on the old MVP. David David needs to know where the uh, five milliliter jobby comes from, and if that adapter case, adapter for run later, if that's yes. if that's available from them, David's having some of them. Um, they I actually bought these um, from Health Cabin. Chinese, Chinese. So anybody? Yeah. Um, uh, do we know if anybody in the UK is doing them? I haven't seen them. I did have a little scout around and I haven't seen them and there's not many reviews on them either. And I'm kind of in the middle of filming a review for my YouTube channel on this one. Right. Um, but at the moment, I think the build quality needs some work because I'm, I, I am getting a bit of gurgling. Um, however, that being said, it's not a bad little device. And if any UK vendors are going to sell them, I think they'll do quite well. These are about two pounds seventy, uh, two pound eighty, something like that. Right. GBP. Um, the little adapter was a bit, uh, was quite cheap as well. Right, D uh, does I think we're going to have to, uh, with your your new piece, your new stuff, your what's it called? My Zedma. No, no, no. Your new, your new little video section on Mark or show. Oh, the oh the hardware roundup page. Yes. You'll, yes. have to, you'll have to keep an eye out for those adapter for grandurbalizers. Well, I just happened to notice in chat that Daz is from Safer Six has just put up that Vaporscape apparently do them. Do they indeed? I think they might be slightly different. So I will be checking that out straight after. Thanks very much for that, Daz. Yes, Daz speaks to Daz. It's Daz, Daz versus Daz. It's all good stuff, isn't it? Daz. <laughs> Indeed. Well, um, I'll tell you what, what we'll do, Daz. You've got five minutes. So, how did how did you get a start? What uh, What's your story? How did you come about the EC Glock? And, and, you know, did you start with a looky lady or, or what? Do the tell. Bit, the first time I tried it, it wasn't... Um, I mean, I'll be vaping coming up a year in February, but the first time I tried it wasn't actually then. It was maybe about year and a half before that and I bought a Gamuchi which I think was a 901 um, and it was a, I bought it because it looked like the cigarette it resembled the cigarette and the end lit up and you, you smoked it like a cigarette and you blew out what looked like smoke and unfortunately what, when I got it it didn't um, it didn't satisfy what I thought it was going to do so I ended up going straight back on the six, and then when I started again, I ordered a, um, it was a 501 kit from the Smokers Angel, and this time I knew already about pre cartos, so I went down the line of ordering my own liquid, which I'm really, really, personally I'm glad I did, um, because that was, from the moment that I first tried that uh, 510 device, I've never had another cigarette since, and I still swear to this day that it's the only thing that moved me away from, you know, combustible tobacco. Then from there, um, after a short space of time, in with getting to know the vaping community, I then started with a, an ego, an ego battery, um, with atomizers. Then I went on to tanks, so I was using like Vision Egos, VV Novas. Then I've got the lava tube which was the next one, which you'll remember, because we, we covered it on your show, Dave. Yeah. 
Yes. That was the chrome one. Yes. Um, was, that, uh, was that the show where everything kept on going black? <laughs> no, that wasn't. That wasn't. That was a couple of weeks later, that one. The first one, I think it was when the chrome ones had virtually just come out. It was the version two. And then um, the most recent edition, well, and then I've had it, sorry, between that I had the Janty Neo and uh, the most recent one, which is the Z-Max. And that's the most recent one that I'm using now. How are you getting on with that? I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. it, it going from variable voltage to variable wattage, and I can now honestly say that I know what a sweet spot is. Mm. So what is your sweet spot with that beam? It's about ten and a half watts. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, you, you. I only discovered that either yesterday or the day before, and that was purely by accident because I turned it up without realising. You profligate person, you. <laughs> ten watts. Ten watts. Good Lord above, you were growing higher as I'm going lower and lower. Yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting. I don't think I would need to go any higher. Well, I'm seeing that, but we'll wait and see what happens. But I use a, I'm using a two and a half ohm coil, and it's really, really good. I mean, it's still not too hot. Loads bags of flavour and bags of vapour, and I'm really happy with the outcome. Excellent. That's all good stuff. Excellent stuff. I tell you what, I think we'll uh, we'll take Dave's adverts because tonight we are the happy vapors. We are all of us. And did ask, it's Aston Villa he follows, isn't it? Aye. Did they win yesterday? I think they drew yesterday, but they did get beaten by Bradford recently. Yeah, that, you would know that, of course, wouldn't you? What, being from Yorkshire? Yes. No, I just saw it on the news after my show on the Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, and I'm, United and Barnsley, that's me. Ah oh, right, I see. Well, I shall, I shall see if I can find my way into Dave's adverts because we're trying to keep it as much Dave's tackle box as possible. I would get mine out and show you my tackle box, only it's hidden under there, <laughs> out the way, because as you'll have noticed, there is a, a massive change. Uh, which camera? That camera. There's a massive change to uh, to how things are happening now. Um, it's all gone real. There's no blue screen. Well, there's blue screen, but it's not being blue screened. This is 1080 stuff, and, and it's and it's the real I am. So here's Dave's adverts. We'll be back in two ticks. Cloud9 Vaping. Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Good evening, eventually. Took a little while to uh, get things lined up and ready to go, then. But, uh, but I'm here now, so uh, welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. So it's, uh... So there we go, we're back in the room and not long to go now. So yeah, I was uh, my, I was talking to my son and he's, he's watched me make things before. And a very good evening to you. It is Tuesday the 20th of November 2012 and you have tuned into Vapor Seat of uh, At Vapor Trends TV tell us, tonight being Wednesday and night, it is time for the one and only chat show programme called VT Talk. 
which is the Hayes Hour. Again. Again. Keith was just saying, if it wasn't for the titles, he wouldn't come and do the show. He loves them so much, don't he? Oh, I like it. And we're back in the room, back in the room properly, uh, faded in, as you do like that. And, and while while we were away, we were having a little bit of a conversation. And we, we want to hear from chat tonight. Uh, we want your input about beginners. And I, I was going to say some of the daft things they come up with, but that's not really what I mean. Because when you're just getting a start with these things, any question is a serious question. It's not daft, you know. Um, I mean those of us that have been around a reasonable length of time might think what a daft thing to say but it actually it isn't actually a daft thing to say it's because people don't really know it was interesting actually that that mark you mentioned uh, you mentioned nicotine and, and how much you you didn't think a, a zero nick e cig was going to do you any good um have you ever have you ever actually tried doing the, the zero nick thing for any length of time um not for any length of time. What I covered in in the uh, the last couple of weeks on bakery about making juices, uh, and uh, I always make up my samples. Um, in fact, I've got a smaller one. White balance might go funny. Um, when I make my samples up, I make them zero nick um, to test the flavour um, more than anything else. So I'm not wasting loads of nicotine. Do you do you, um, do you question here for you? Because again, it, it's something that I, I don't actually know. Do you taste nicotine? Because I'm pretty sure I don't. Um, yes. I personally get a different taste. Um, and it's got, obviously it's got a smell as well. Uh, if, I, if I open my bottle of 75, I can smell it without a doubt. Um, so personally, I do think it, it changes the taste um, when you've added it in. Um, because obviously you're not. We start from the, the beginning. When I make up a sample, um, I substitute the nicotine that I would put in with extra VG, which is obviously sweeter. Um, and although the nicotine base I use is made with VG, uh, with yeah, with VG, um, it is an alkaline substance, isn't it? It's an alkaloid, so it's not going to be sweet. It's going to be bitter. So it will change the characteristics of what you vape on. Now you've just given me the clue there. Bitter. You see, genetically I'm incapable of tasting bitter. I can't, I just don't taste bitter. Um, ah. it's, it's one of those genetic things. So if nicotine tastes bitter, that explains why I can't taste it. Which is interesting right. because um, when it comes down to a juice that I know well, RY6 for argument's sake, I've various different places you go you know how people are oh, I've got some RY6 and you say oh what is it you know, 12 milligram PG and you, yeah go on I'll try it then and you know as you do to be nice sort of style and I taste it and it tastes exactly the same as 36 in PG or it would taste the same as 36 in BM2 if it was BM2 I mean I can tell the difference between VG and PG but when it comes down to the amount of nicotine that's in there I can't taste the difference I feel a difference, but I can't taste a difference. Does uh, does that affect you as well? Can you taste nicotine? Yeah, I can. I get a peppery taste, and that's how I know. Well, the reason that I can tell was going back to the days when I used to try and give up cigarettes altogether before I started vaping. I was using um, nicotine gum, and it was a high nicotine in the gum and I could really, really taste the nicotine, which is like almost a peppery flavour. But um, it, it's it's a funny story when you had mentioned all this and I'm sorry, but I'm going to name a chain cat here because um, mm. I think one of the main reasons that I've discovered about nicotine being discovered and last week, I think for almost two days, cat was like a bear with a sore head. And then she realised that the batch that uh, the batch of juice that her and Sav had made up from our go show, she'd forgot to put nicotine in altogether. 
<laughs> so if you can't taste it, you must certainly be able to feel it. That's my opinion anyway. Oh, without a doubt. And that little, that little <laughs> wave of the hand is to say I did exactly the same when I was messing yeah. about mixing. <laughs> and I, 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 I was busily getting the flavour right and uh, thought, oh, that's, that's really nice. It tasted just right. And then I don't know why uh, I'm going to call it a brain fart um, and just forgot that I needed to actually put some nicotine in that and didn't. And uh, I got through the next day pretty much all right, aside from the fact that I nearly got pulled over by the police for road rage. Um, and my wife and I had our first row in I don't know how many years. And apparently I was like a bear with a sore head and then realised what had happened and mm -hmm. uh, pulled some 36 mil out and few on that. And all of a sudden it was just like this, this veil of calm just fell over my body and took me into the arms of Morpheus from <laughs> whence all good things come. Well, we've got a couple of comments from chat as well. Black Do tell. Water, Blackwater Vapor says that um, it doesn't taste it much but burns in mouth. And we've got a question as well from uh, uh, Key Awards, put newbie question from the wife. Eagle cartridge, clear juice, when low, it's turned brown. Is that the nicotine? No. A lot of people will tell you it's caramel or caramelization or oxidation or whatever. It's a discoloration is what it is. And it's caused, you know this process of steeping that everybody goes on about? Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of accelerated steeping. If you've got, uh, if you leave a clear juice for any length of time, it will change colour. And I don't know whether you'll be able to tell with this, but uh, you probably can't see it. Um, but it's quite strawy brown. Oh, you can see it. That's quite a straw colour. Uh, in fact, were it a urine sample, I would say that the camel was pregnant. Um, but that was perfectly clear when it got to me. Um, it's Intellisig Eco Pure Rich 45 milligram, in case anybody's interested. And uh, one of my go-tos, it has to be said. Um, and that's had, well, I've had that what? That little bit in the bottom's been there about four and a half months now, and it's taken it that long, but it has discoloured. Um, going back a donkey's age, um, Peter Cole, those of you that know of DV will know of Peter, um, he uses quite hefty nicotine concentrations. He's up around 60 milligrams, sometimes up to 72. And he had a bottle which he'd left the top off on his desk, and it's just stood there for a year, and it was black as your father's hat, but it's fine. It's not a problem. It's not going to do you any damage. Um, Peter said so, and I believe what he says because he knows he's a, he's a, a proper alchemist. Never mind, just a chemist. And uh, yeah, he, he reckons it's absolutely fine like that. And I've I've got some juice that's black as your father's hat as well, and it's fine. It's it's not an issue. It's nothing you need to worry about. It just can look unsightly, especially if it's. Um, slightly off red as it's coloured and you've got it in that new unit that Sav was playing with last week. We probably need to move on. Anything else from chat, Daz? Um, yeah, we've got... Um, very boring has said from before, said, yeah, I mix more delicate flavours with less nick. Makes them taste nicer, but I have to vape more. And Kieran Pozo has put, is using steep juice bad for you? Um, no, it's not. What, what This whole notion of steepage, it took me by surprise. The, the, uh, our American cousins went absolutely overboard on it uh, a couple of years ago. And there were videos about how to actually steep your juice and, and giving you step-by-step -step instructions. Basically open the bottle and shove it in the air and cover it for a fortnight. Was, but if you want, you can take it out and shake it every day. But it'll get the air in and basically that's all you're doing is you're allowing the air to get to it and it denatures certain parts of it um, but that doesn't actually do any harm what it'll also do of course if you've just mixed a batch of juice up um, today say it and you go to taste it and you think nah, nah. one of those it's a meh juice well mm. leave the lid off and stick it somewhere warm out, out the road of you know pet mice and fluffy bunnies and stuff like that um, and then go back to it in a couple of weeks time and give it another try and you'll find that the, the flavours have mingled more 
and it may have mellowed and, and depending on what the constituent parts of the flavourings are it'll mellow or it'll become sharper but it'll change in nature the more the air gets to it. Um, it's actually, I find it the same with a, a large tank uh, especially on these Clearo type things, the MT3 particularly I find the flavour mellows as you get down towards the bottom because it's gone quite dark, it's had quite a lot of heat quite mm. a lot of air to it um, and I do have a tendency to you know, if they chopped my hands off, I'd be dumb. I wouldn't be able to speak to anybody. So, no, it's not going to do you any damage. Uh, the whole notion of steeping is to allow flavours to mingle and change, to mellow, to graduate, to, 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 to differ over time. Um, if you're lucky, it differs in a way you like. If you're unlucky, it differs in a way you don't. Or if you like me, you just use the same juice day in, day out. And you've got two or three staples that you stand by. One of which is never menthol, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Does that help, Daz? Yeah, absolutely. Goodly good Inklands. Uh, I see there's other bits and bobs going on in chat there. What's uh, What's been the crack? I, I see Maddie Paul has mentioned something, but I don't know what it was. Um, just basically, the, the, the talking about um, forums, from what I've picked up is, you know, about people using forums and um, I think what I'm picking up on is when you first register with the forum is using the likes of the the you know the the thread which is you know if you are a newbie please look here uh, rather than posting new posts on um, on forums where questions may have already been answered. Yeah, I think the thing the, the thing about that as well to be to kind of play devil's advocate a little bit, folks. If you know the answer, or if you've got some idea of what the answer is, and you're looking, is it this or is it that? It's easier to search. But if you're searching on, um, is steeping bad for juice, for instance, you're not necessarily going to find that sentence in a thread. Mm. You know, and I think quite, quite honestly, sometimes it is easier just to ask the question. And to be fair, you know, those of us that have been around a reasonable length of time, we ought to know. And it mm. really doesn't take a great deal of doing to go in and, and tap a quick a quick answer in that, that's yeah. going to guide them. I mean, to be well, fair, to be fair, I, I that's was, what I was going to say. That's what happens on the fluffy bunnies. That's why I call it the fluffy bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to add on as well there, because not just on vaping related, but it is unfortunate. But you'll probably find it on nearly every forum, regardless of what the topic is. That I'm a member of some other forums which aren't vaping related and it's exactly the same and uh, sometimes it's just one of them things where you know you might it might sound a bit repetitive but if we can help new people as much as possible regardless then you know that's what it's all about at the end of the day in my experience. Well hell yes you know mm -hmm. if it, it, it's kind of if it's going to take 10 seconds out of your day let it uh, let it happen you know do it why not. Yeah. If you're helpful, I, I, I'm a big believer in karma. Um, I'm pretty sure that what goes around comes around, and if you, you know, if you're nice to people as you go through life, people will be nice to you. At least I hope that's the case. I try Absolutely. to be nice. Absolutely. Always try to be nice. Sometimes fail miserably. Mark, oh, you've been sitting there very quiet for a donkey's age. What have you got to say about all of this? Well, uh, I mean, the whole thing about newbies, well, all newbies wants, uh, and it's a bit like having a learner driver in front of you who has only got into the car that day. You get frustrated sometimes because you know you want to get to where you need to get to but you can't because it's a learner driver in front of you. Um, you know we've all been there uh, and we all need to help as much as we can um, even if it is a point in the right direction um, or give them the answer that they're looking for. Um, I think it's such a difficult thing to to get into and understand quickly there's lots of, of, of things you need to look at or, or need to be able to see. Um, so the best place is always going to be in you know, a newbie's corner. It doesn't matter what form it is. Um, just going back to the juice thing, that is a sample of juice I made for the, the show on Bacacine, which is just without nicotine. This one, um, which you can see there, that I made on the 6th of July last year. Right. Um, and that's how dark it has gone, uh, and I'll still vape on that. <laughs> it's it not a problem. What is it? Does it taste nice? It's uh, it's tutti frutti. Um, oh, you Nancy! Still smells really nice, I have to say. 
Um, I'm sorry. Said, I like a, I like the fruit flavors. I, I don't really make tobacco flavors. You know that is a mint choc chip, um, and that one is um, I think it's a Pete's Melba that I made up. I'm getting uh, slightly worried about you, Mark. Well, uh, whatever. Just uh, a bit, you know. <laughs> I mean, come on. But I, what's your favorite ice cream? Uh, um, all of them. <laughs> you don't get to be this size without liking all ice cream. That's um, true. I, really got, I think my favourite ice cream has to be um, a Hagen Dazs Pralines and Cream, if I'm honest. <laughs> which right. is quite nice. Um, but I've never really raked on, on tobacco flavours. I do have one that, I'm, that I made which tastes very similar to Golden Virginia. Uh, and then I made another version that had licorice, just a very hint of it, so it tasted like it. I was vaping on uh, a roller made with licorice paper. That wasn't too bad. Yes. Um, but I don't know a lot of people that don't do fruit, that just do tobacco. Um, but there are obviously people who like the tobacco flavours, but I tend to like the, the fruitier flavours or, or mint or menthol. Uh, I mean, I tried your high white. Six or five six when I was around your house, didn't I? Yes. I didn't. I didn't like it all that much. No, no. Um, I, no I noticed the look on your face. Yeah, uh, and maybe it was the strength. I don't know. Um, but um, you know, if I'd liked it, I could. I would have nicked a, cup, a bottle of it. Um, well, there's yeah. actually, actually, when we're talking about this, and before it scrolls off here, uh, Moonlit has just said, "I think I've asked this before, but what do you say to a potential vapor?" who expects e cigs to taste exactly like a cigarette and if they don't they get a bit iffy about it. Have you have, have either of you come across this, Daz? Well I would say to them in the first well now I would say to them I wouldn't want them to now anyway. Um because the the flavours that I've tried are far more interesting than what that in my opinion what tobacco could ever be. Um, I remember probably about months after vaping of trying the cigarette <clears throat> and the, the flavour was much, much milder and the hit wasn't as intense, uh -huh. which was really, really surprising. So what I would be saying to them is just, you know, don't just focus on something that looks and uh, that tastes exactly like a cigarette. Experiment with the flavours and find what you like. Try it for a bit and then try a cigarette and try the difference and see if uh, that makes any difference because I was quite shocked. Indeed. Mark, what do you tell them? Yeah, I would say it's not like smoking. <laughs> it's completely not like smoking. You're never going to get the same taste, flavour, um, or, in my opinion, the, the lung feel, the throat it and the lung feel that you're going to get from uh, your favourite fag and I think a lot of people when they start vaping and stop smoking um, expect it to be just the same um, and I think we need to get across that it's, it's not and um, you're never going to get exactly the same taste but that's a good thing not a bad thing because I think you, apart from the fact that we are addicted to nicotine, and you know, we can't deny the fact that we are, otherwise, we wouldn't bake nicotine juice. Um, but it's it's the, the, the habit of the smoking, and then the kind of memory of the taste. Um, and that's maybe why I started off on, on the fruity flavors. Um, and as soon as I'd started, I didn't want another cigarette, and I still don't. It's, um, it's, it's interesting that because I've been asked the question myself a few times and what I've tended to say is you can get a juice that tastes like a cigarette smells before you've lit it or a, a, a good mm. backy if you like smells before you've lit it. If you, if you were to get a pouch of Golden Virginia or whatever else you happen to make your roll-ups out of if indeed you make roll-ups and you stick your nose in and give it a good sniff the taste is like the tobacco, but what it, what you don't get is the bonfire coming through. You don't get the uh, the burning of the paper and the, no. and the and the that kind of acridness out of the whole thing is what I would say to them. And and like you've just said, uh, it's a reminder of what a cigarette tasted like. But give it a fortnight, and 
you'll be cool. See, I always used to think, I mean, I, I, for a donkey's age, I would have smoked Lambert and Butler when Ooh. Lambert and Butler was the thing to smoke. And it got to the stage where I didn't actually taste them as such. There was no real flavour to them. And if I wanted to get a change of flavour, I would go and buy a pack of Marley's and then take the chance on getting kicked out of the house because my wife didn't like the smell of Marlborough. But I loved the taste of them. But after a fortnight, they tasted exactly the same as I remembered Lambert and Butler's. Mm. And it didn't matter what I smoked, no matter what brand it was, they ended up, all of them, tasting exactly the same. And I think, to some degree, it's why I don't do this 433 different flavours. I mean, if you look along the shelf, there's RY4, RY5 and RY6. That's it. That's all I use. And I don't use as much of the RY4. I use a lot of the RY6 and the RY5. I keep, for those difficult days, if you, if you ever get them, do, do, you, do, you, do either of you suffer the difficult day? Um, yeah. No, I wouldn't say I suffer a difficult day. There, there have been times when I've thought, I could just do a fag. I could just light one up right now. Um, Why well, don't then, you? Because... A, I haven't got me. In fact, no, it's a lie. I've got two that have been rolled and they're in a little tin, a, you know, a small little rolly tin that I used to have in my car and they've been there since last February. They'll be as dry <laughs> as a camel's armpit. It'll be like lighting a blue touch paper. Absolutely. What about <laughs> um, you, Daz? Do you, do you get a difficult deer? Not now. We used to, but not now. And I think part and parcel is because my brother, um, he took a bit and then he now... Um, he now went back to smoking, and because I can smell it on him, it, it, it just puts us off. It really does put us off. Ah, right, right. It's a funny one, that one. Always mm. always has been funny. Yeah. I mean, um, I was just looking here, and um, Moanley came up with quite a good comment and said, you can get liquids which taste of what cigarette tastes like after you've not smoked for a while, by which I mean ash tree. Yes. The old, the, the old ash tree, they have found essence of ash tree somehow, uh, it, which is, is just, to me, is just wrong. Um, it's not something I want to do at all. However, we need to take a swift break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about more beginnery things, I would imagine, and potentially having a giggle. You never just know. It's, um, I've never been Dave Kitson before, it's quite nice, really. Um, we'll be back in a couple of ticks. of Dave's Tavern Rocks. can't watch our shows live try some of these go to youtube at youtube.com slash user slash vapor trails tv and you can subscribe there all of our shows are uploaded as soon as possible after they've gone out live enjoy watching it on youtube lots of people do alternatively go to google and type in podcast vaportrails.tv and itunes click on the link and that will take you to a page that shows you the Vapor Trails TV podcast. View it in iTunes, and when you get to iTunes, 
don't forget to click on subscribe free and each of the shows will be downloaded to your hard drive as soon as they come out. Or you can use video on demand. Go to www.vapertrails.tv, click on vplayer, pick the show you want to watch, in this case it's the Hayes Hour, and then you can pick the episode that you want to watch from every one that we've ever done. They're all there. Under normal circumstances, you'll watch it at 360p, which means everybody can see it. It'll go full screen, you can do whatever you want with it. So there you go, three ways that you can watch VaporTrails.tv. Subscribe and enjoy. Thanks. I should point out, oops, first time in a long time, I've had a bit of echo there. I should point out, and I should say, um, I really should say, that we are massively grateful to our sponsors here on Vapor Trails TV. Without them, we wouldn't be able to bring you what we bring you. Um, and, you know, they've been with us from the start, really. And uh, I, I would just urge everybody that's watching, if you need to buy something, look at our sponsors first, please. Um, and, and you know spend your money with them it's worthwhile they keep us going so that we can keep bringing you information and uh, that's all good Daz have we had anything else in from chat has there been much going through there was one more comment as well which uh, I'll just get back uh, please bear with me the Super 7 taste and vaping is a funny thing I love peanut butter and made up some juice I smell just like it I think he was meant to put it, it smelled just like the real thing and tasted the same. But as a, as a vape, it was just so wrong. What flavour was that again? It was peanut butter. Yeah, there is something wrong with that. It yeah, has to I, be said. I think if it tastes like, if, if you vape it, um, I, I, I don't think I could get, get into that sort of uh, flavour. No, no, not me either. Did I see that a question had just come down from Stealth? Uh, let me just have a look there. I've got windows open all over the place. Uh, it's from Stealth, from Stealth. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, what is it, Mark? Uh, it's, does nicotine base have a shelf life? Oh, yes. Ah, right, yes. Um, it kind of does and it kind of doesn't. And it depends mm. on how you store it. Unrefrigerated, unfrozed, un whatever, two years is what they reckon is the shelf life. Two years before it starts to lose its efficacy. There's a word, efficacy. We have to use the word efficacy these days. In other words, it's, it'll start getting less and less powerful. It, it'll, it loses its concentration. It loses its kick. But if you bung it into a freezer and set your freezer on as cold as it'll possibly go, please, then you will extend that substantially and that could be five, six or even seven years. So it's worth thinking about, especially given the current climate. If we're not successful um, in Europe, then, you know, a chest freezer with 60 kilograms in might not be a bad idea. Will you be stocking up, Mark? Oh, if it all goes to uh, hell in a handbasket? Aye. <laughs> Currently, um, I have got a full litre in stock of 75 um, and the shelf life is till 2014 on that um, I'm coming up to the end of my last bottle I think I've got about a hundred mils of the last bottle that I had um, I will more than likely be buying at least another litre of 75 and I'll either decant that down into 250 mil bottles and freeze it um, or make ice cubes and freeze it. Don't know. Probably put it in the bottles. To be fair. Yes. Um, but make sure that you don't overfill them because it will expand and uh, crack the bottles, which you don't want. So. Especially, if, if, especially if they're glass bottles. Yes. Yeah, I'd use plastic bottles. To be fair. Yeah. Um, but if you've got kids, make sure it's locked up because uh, it, you know if it looks anything like an ice lolly or whatever, you know we don't want any accidents. 
No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I should tell you that your internet has just got faster. Mine has? Yep, yours has. Oh, interesting. Because your signal coming in went from 4 to 3 to 16 by 9. Yeah, okay. It, it's, it's amazing what you can find out with Skype, honestly. <laughs> yes, um, well, my, uh, my internet's not too quick. Uh, as it goes, <laughs> which neither is why I can only go up to uh, 480 on my show on a Tuesday. Yeah, neither um, was mine on Wednesday and Thursday. Trust me on that one. <laughs> but hopefully, it's looking it's looking like 2014 now for my postcode, where we can get fibre, which is so annoying. But there you go. I, I've been trying for weeks and weeks and weeks to get fibre, but um, a, a house seven numbers down from me can get infinity, but I can't. It's bonkers. But oh, there you go. Well, seven houses is within a hundred yards. Yeah. Just run an, run an Ethernet cable down <laughs> to his router. Well, yeah, I was thinking maybe a little power cable and do, you know, a power, internet over power, which is what I do in the house anyway. Yes. Um, but, yeah, I've, uh, I've spoken to lots of different companies uh, and I am trying to get the fastest possible speed. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you because I'm seeing all kinds of questions coming in on juice and storage. Daz, do you want mm -hmm. to read them out? Yeah, we've got two questions. The first one is from Andy Bell, and his question is, nicotine keeps for two years. Is it on the bottles how old it is already before it gets to us? What I find with all of the ones I get um, is that it's got uh, a kind of use by, best before, that kind of date on, which tells you how old it is when it gets there because everybody w seems to work on this two years so if I was to pick up, where is it, I'll pick up this one um, it has an expiry of 16th of August 2013 it says here um, I suppose I can walk up to the camera will it focus, will it hell, yes it has, there you go 16th of August 2013 um, and I got that in, I got it on the 17th of August 2011, believe it or not. RY High Five. Um, told you it was special. Um, so that that would take me through till then. Uh, but that's, I've pulled that one out of the, uh, out of the freezer for tonight. Because I've got to be honest, they, these, all of these bottles are put up for sure and then they get hoiked back in the freezer after well. the show. Sorry, just leading on to what you've just said there, we've got another question as well, dear, from Stealth187. Yeah. And what they've said is, has anyone froze any nicotine yet? Will it not turn like when you unfreeze milk? If it froze, you would get separation because each of the constituent parts freezes at different temperatures. But I'm here to tell you that either glycerin or propylene glycol doesn't freeze at anything like you're going to be able to get your domestic freezers pardon me, down to, uh, it's, it's minus lots and nicotine's not far away from that so it doesn't separate out. The thing to do though is if you've been storing it in the freezer, when you get it out, give it a good shake, give it a really good chuck about the place and get it out the day before or two days before you're going to open it up. It's not going to, in fact a week or a fortnight even, if you know you, you, you're running low um, and you don't, uh, as Mark was said, your last 100 mils, well there's a fort fortnight's worth for most people. Um, so you get your, your half litre or your litre bottle out and you give it a good shake and let it stand for a, a couple of weeks and keep shaking it every day and that'll mix everything back up. You're not going to lose any, any punch or any efficacy or anything like that. It'll all carry on being absolutely lovely. Um, be, be very careful that you don't use it as soon as you brought it out the freezer though because it'll crack coils I know this because I've tried um, and if it's anything like vodka you don't realise how cold it is when you've taken like the bison grass vodka out of the freezer and you neck it and suddenly realise you've done your stomach in it's not nice well it is but it, my god it kicks like meal sorry I've diverted a little bit there anything else does um, let me just have a quick look it's just really going on the comments Catherine just reiterated and she says that it doesn't actually freeze but it stays very cold which increases the shelf life um, and MJ Jones says that you know any home freezer it won't fully freeze so it's fine uh, Blackwater Vapor said, I want to buy a litre in the group but can't afford in two weeks' time. 
uh, and Blackwater Viva said home fees are too small unless I take food out. If I, so, if I can pick up on that, uh, what Blackwater Viva said, mm. right? And I know for a lot of people it can be difficult, but I know that a litre of juice is going to be around about anywhere between 100 and 120 quid, there or thereabouts. And it might be cheaper on certain uh, offers that come out and, and, and stuff like that. It's worthwhile just salting a few bob away every so often into a jam jar or something that you can pay into an account that will sort your PayPal out. So that when the opportunity comes round to buy the litre, you can buy the litre. And it works out so much cheaper if you can buy it by the half litre or by the litre. It, 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 and you're not going to lose the efficacy of it. You can, you can decant it into 30 ml bottles and shove it in the freezer if that's what you want to do. But it works out so much cheaper if you can buy it by the litre. And I'm, to be honest, I'm thinking, you know, the way things are going, um, a lot of the vendors will be looking at buying in litres and five litres, that mm. kind of thing, ready for folks to be able to stock up if it looks as though it's all going to go to uh, curly whirlies and, uh, and what have you. It's, um, that's, it's something that we've got to look at. And I think everybody's got to be thinking about it. Uh, I know, you know, I am. Mark, are you? Absolutely, Dave. Uh, like I said, you know, I've got one um, at the moment and I've got about 100 mil of my first bottle or left. Um, so I'll probably be getting at least another one uh, and decanting down to smaller bottles and put it in the freezer. Um, and if, you know, if it ends up me going on a, an auction site and picking up an, a second-hand chest freezer to keep in the garage, I'll do that. Well, somebody, somebody has said, befriend your local butcher. Uh, <laughs> yeah, haven't really got a local butcher. Or a local, uh, well, I was going to say a local fishmonger, but you couldn't be any further away from the sea if you tried in the UK, could you? <laughs> Well, there's plenty of there's plenty of butchers around. Um, whether or not I'd want to keep um, my nick somewhere else, I don't know. Might well, get nicked. Well, there is that. There is that. And you're right. Big chest phrase is probably the thing to do, which almost wraps us up. Actually, um, who knew that an hour would go hurtling past quite as quickly as it has? And I've got to say, it has been, uh, as far as I'm concerned, an honour to be here in Dave Kitts instead. Um, I've never, I can't remember the last time I did one of Dave's shows and it's been cracking to be here. Um, it's forced me hand to get the place tidied up, which is brilliant and I really like that. Uh, I would like to say a big thank you uh, to Mark or Van Basten. Mark, thank you. You're very welcome Mr Dawn, always a pleasure, never a chore. And a big thank you to Daz, Vaping Daz. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much and I've got to say uh, specifically about Daz, he was my lifeline the other day because the only thing I could get onto was Twitter. So I'm going, Daz, can you tell everybody I'm mad? And it was all good, all good. But um, that's that's it. Uh, that has drawn the show to a close, and so it is time to say goodbye in true Dave Kitson style. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Until then, take care and vape hard. Bye.